Good morning, folks, as we work our way through this week. I hope that we can be encouraged, give one another some encouragement, and also find our Bible reading today something that's both informative and also helpful for our lives uh, and a blessing to us. We'll be working our way through the letter to the Colossians. Uh, we're at Colossians chapter 3 today in our Bible reading challenge, and I hope that we're encouraged by it. Because what Paul has to speak about today is, is very much strikes to the heart of not so much our, um, our beliefs and our faith as our behaviours. Um, if we believe, as Christian message often goes out, and, and as important to go out, in that it's our faith in Christ that really matters. We talk about this, talked about this a little yesterday. Um, what about our behaviours that then follow from that? Our belief in Christ, our faith in God through Christ is what saves us. But naturally, you would anticipate if we have truly uh, believed in Christ and asked for forgiveness and, and, and repented, that there would be a change in our life that would happen over time. That's not to say we won't make mistakes and, and keep needing to ask for forgiveness. But, but surely there would be a change in our behaviours, in our speech, in, in the way that we act and the way we deal with one another. Paul strikes right to this in Colossians chapter 3. So let's have a look at that and see what we make of it. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these, you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of the Creator. Here there is not Greek and law, uh, and sorry, Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian. Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness and patience, bearing with one another and, if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, submit yourself to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives. And do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Bond servants or employees, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters or employers, not by way of eye service as people please us, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. Amen. Now, I just say at the start, that um, 
what we have within, within here is, is behaviours in particular. And Paul really is striking to the heart of the kind of things we find ourselves either tempted by, things that we used to do in the past maybe, and as Christians we maybe ought not, um, behaviours, ways of speech, uh, the way we talk to one another, lies, all these kind of things. He discourages us from doing and tells us some things we ought to be doing as well. He even has advice for the way we work in our employ, whatever that might be, how we spend our time. If we have employers, look carefully at the work we do for them. If we are employers or business owners, how do we actually uh, comport ourselves with regards to our business? All of this is within there, and he encourages us to always look and, and deal with one another as if we were dealing with Christ himself. Now, I want to get to what has probably been one of the more controversial parts of this chapter when he talks about wives and husbands and children. Um, this is a passage that has been very difficult for a lot of folks to, to stomach. And part of it comes out of Paul's own experience. Maybe he was a husband at one time and, and a widower. That's one thought with regards to the Apostle Paul. Or maybe he was never married, but from his own um, culture, and also from the cultures that he would have come into contact with in all the Gentile world. He would have seen a lot of families and would have known a lot about them. And maybe he speaks into these as well. There is a question whether he was ever married himself or not. It seems unlikely that he had children of his own. But he gives advice here for families. I want to suggest to you that this advice comes from maybe a bit of an understanding of what we personally find hardest. Um, let me explain by, by taking the examples he uses. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands too, submit yourselves, as he says in another place. You know, we, we, there is a, an, an act of submission that takes place, a to and a fro there's, there's an equality that takes place within, within married life. Um, as is fitting to the Lord, he suggests here. Now, he may, maybe singles out wives because the idea of submitting to husbands can be very difficult indeed. But this is what he encourages. He then goes on, however, to speak to the husband. He has more to say to husbands than he has to wives. First of all, he says, love your wives. Now that might seem a bit of a no-brainer. Of course you're supposed to love your wife, but love? Express your love? Show your emotions? Maybe some guys find that difficult to do. And then when he goes on to say, do not be harsh with them, well, there's, here's something that maybe many of us guys need to take on the chin. Um, it's very easy for a, a male psyche, if you like, to, to like things a certain way, um, to, to like to solve problems. And when someone comes to you with, with, with a, an issue or a problem, particularly a wife, to get straight into problem solving mode. It's a well-known psychological issue. And, and certainly a lot of marriage counsellors raise that as an issue. You know, just, just hold your horses, guy. Listen to what your wife is trying to say here and put your listening ear on and then put the other listening ear on and listen to what they have to say. Because sometimes, and this isn't across the board, but sometimes people think um, different ways. That partially gender based? Not always. Um, and so this admonition here, don't be harsh with them. Don't be so judgmental. Take your time. This may be wise advice. I certainly wish I could listen to this all the time. Then he goes on to children. Obey your parents in everything. That's hard for children to do. The natural inclination for children, just as we've seen with wives and husbands, isn't necessarily to do this. Um, and and we, we know that when children listen to what their parents have to say, especially where there are good parents, and it has to be said, not all parents are good parents, but the vast majority are trying their best. They're trying to raise their children the best way they know how. They want them to live and to flourish and to take their place in society. And that means that they'll tell them what to do quite often as they train them, as they teach them and as they learn things. And sometimes we need to do that, particularly when it comes to our issues of safety around and about roads and other times. But they need to learn obedience. They need to do what they're told right there and then immediately. And it's hard for children to do that because that isn't a natural inclination for any of us. But it starts with childhood. And so children are invited here to obey their parents in everything. Because this pleases the Lord. Now, next, and last but not least, 
fathers, and this goes for mothers as well, but particularly fathers because of the way that fathers deal with their children and maybe play with their children. Do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Fathers can tease. Mothers tend to be less likely to do that. I mean, all of these particular traits are not gender specific. I want to be clear about that. When it comes to submission, when it comes to uh, being harsh, when it comes to being loving and talking about our emotions, when it comes to being provocative, um, being discouraged, or being obedient, being, you know, taking a telling. You know, all of these things are, are regardless of age or gender or sex. You know, that, that's, that isn't uh, um, necessarily the, a message that's specific just for wives, just for husbands, just for children. But let's be honest, guys do like to tease and they'll rough and tumble a bit more with children than perhaps mothers will in general. And, and here's the, a word of caution and care here. Do we just watch what we're doing? Fathers, do not provoke your children. And the reason that Paul gives here is lest they become discouraged. We know that so many of our behaviours are set in childhood. The things we learn in our environment are set in childhood. And a lot of our problems as adults can stem back to how we were treated as children. And certainly um, a child who is cowed, um, very often that might come from maybe an, an overbearing parent in the past. That's just one example. I think Paul knows a little bit about that. And this seems to be what he's getting at. So when we read things here that are perhaps quite challenging for us to hear, depending on you know, who we are and our role as we see it in life, let's perhaps just accept that what Paul's trying to say here is that we maybe revert back to certain behaviours. And he's trying to strike out at the ones that, are, that he's maybe seen in his own culture and in his own time that are the most prevalent. And rather than thinking of our own selfish um desires, our own selfish wants, our own natural inclinations, maybe we want to stop and think a little bit about that. That's maybe no bad admonition even for the 21st century. And so I'm going to leave it there, controversial as it is, and, and we'll have a wee word of prayer, maybe have time to think about that and get on with our day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have got admonition from Scripture uh, from the Apostle Paul, but even Christ before him especially, and even before Christ himself uttered words to his disciples that were passed on to us, all the prophets and the laws of, of long ago that helped us to, to get on with one another in our lives, in our religion, and, and the way that we uh, treat one another as well. Help us to look beyond um, rules and laws to the love that you desire for all of us, that you desire for us to reciprocate to you, and to one another, and that all that we do in life, we might just take time to, to think about it, whether or not it's truly loving. We pray, Lord, that you would help us with this. And when we make mistakes, forgive us. Help us to be humble in our thoughts, and especially in our dealings with one another. Help us because we need that help. We ask that even in the, the controversial sides of things and, and certainly in our own day and age when we think upon these things and all the, the particular battles that we see um, around equalities at this time that, that un are understandable and quite rightly so. That we would see the, the meaning behind them and the hurt that has caused certain battles to take place and, and it needs to be righted. So bless us please as we think on these things. Help us through the day and through the week. We ask them in the name of your ever-loving Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. I hope that's helpful to consider these things and, and certainly food for thought. Please do feel free to get in contact with me if you want to talk about some of these things. But until the next time, until we look at our last chapter within this letter, God bless, take care, and bye for now. <laughs>